Hi, I'm Tom Leiden. I'm a senior advisor to the International Crane Foundation, and along with my wife, Kathy, I, we run the Leiden Conservation Foundation. I must confess I'm a craniac. I love cranes. And we're working with the International Crane Foundation to help save cranes throughout the world. We had the good fortune to go out to Western Kenya with Dr. Rich Belfast at the International Crane Foundation and Karen Morrison because they're working to save cranes in Western Kenya. And the gentleman there, Maurice, is virtually saving one crane at a time. And that's because cranes, like most birds, do not live in protected areas, but live in people's backyards. And these people that are in these areas have all kinds of insecurities, food insecurity, water insecurity, health insecurity. And we're asking them, we're putting the burden on them to help save the last few remaining cranes in Western Kenya. And so by working with them through a variety of techniques like uh, 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 you know, getting them different uh, livelihoods, uh, talking to them about sustainable crops, uh, giving them other ways they could live and leave the wetlands alone. The wetlands, of course, provide all kinds of services for the people. And by saving the wetlands, you save the cranes, but you also enrich the community where they're at. Another exciting project we've been involved with is with the blue, blue cranes in South Africa. And they're in sort of a, uh, they're on the brink because they've been doing well. However, they're living in a modified landscape of agriculture and other type of industries. And so they're, we're sponsoring a study, the Whit International Crane Foundation and the Endangered Wildlife Trust on what the cranes are doing. And this is, has three things. One is they're talking to farmers because these birds are living, you know, on their properties and farmers can make or break them and we're trying to make sure farmers are friendly to them if they're going to mow or something like that they you know respect the nests and also the, you know not to use poison you know because we you, know, you get inadvertent poisoning of cranes the other thing the uh, cranes have trouble with which most large birds have is power lines about 10, 10 to 12 percent of blue crane mortality a year is from power lines. And so they're working with the power company up there to mark these lines to prevent that. And we've done similar studies here in the U.S. with the sandhill cranes, and there's ways to really reduce this, this by 98 percent. So this has been, this has exciting implications for increasing the populations. And the third thing that I actually got down in the dirt on is actually banding cranes. We need to know where they're going and you know how widespread they are because they're moving and you need to understand their movement you need to understand what they're doing and how they're interacting with the farmers so we could help prepare you know a plan uh, not me but uh, the people involved could uh, help make a plan the blue crane's important because it is the national bird of South Africa and everybody wants to work to make sure it's there to fly for many years to come.